the Neolithic saw several technological revolutions. And one of those revolutions is mining. Man began to discover all kinds of things under the surface of the earth, which, with a lot of effort, enabled him to develop today's society and technology. At the beginning of the Neolithic, mortars and mills appeared, which were not used for grinding pigments, but for grinding grains. 10 to 12,000 years ago, in the area of the so-called Fertile Crescent, in the culture called the Natafian culture that spread over the area of today's Palestine and southern Syria, people began to live a partially sedentary lifestyle. Some of their buildings were made with a foundation of limestone. This suggests that these buildings were built to last. The people of the Natafian culture used a series of stone tools, so-called microliths or small stones. These blades and arrowheads were attached to the shafts and thus became tools or weapons. Some of these tools were also used for cutting grain. In the Fertile Crescent from 10,500 years ago to about 8,500 years ago, in a site called the Prepottery Neolithic, a variety of animals and plants were domesticated. Dwellings in that period were made of wood and reeds, but soon after in places like Tel Abu Her'er in present-day Syria, multi-room buildings made of dried bricks were built. These dwellings are gathered in villages and have ovens and hearths. Some of these dwellings have decorated walls and large sculptures. One of them is Chattel Hayek in Turkey, a site that is about 8,500 years old. That Chattel Hayek will also be important for the beginning of metalworking. The first evidence of the use of metal was found on that site. Pieces of elemental copper were found, which people processed with stone. The beginning of mining is related to the extraction of precious stones. Traces of this mining can be found in the Paleolithic. The goal of this mining was to find stones, which could be used or processed for tools. Quartzite, flint and nephrite were valued. In addition, Colors or earth that could be eaten were searched. This had its use in the ritual life of ancient people. The search for stones marked a further revolution in mining, but also in trade. Precious stones were traded already in the Neolithic, and they were transported over long distances, probably from tribe to tribe, to distant lands, where the demand was stimulated by the needs or greed of primitive man. The most important of those precious stones were lapis lazuli, turquoise and amber. The extraction of precious stones had little influence on the development of mining techniques, as most of them were collected from the surface. And as far as we know, only turquoise and some other precious stones were extracted from the ground or from mines similar to those from which copper is extracted. Ancient miners first began to use copper that could be found on the surface of the ground. Over time, this deposit would be depleted and ancient miners had to start going underground to find the metal. Around the year 8000 before Christ, that revolution takes place. Man began to use metal. Copper and gold were first used by ancient people. Both metals can be found in nature and can be easily processed. The so-called meteoric iron, which, as the name suggests, can be found in meteors that have fallen to earth, was especially valuable. Primitive people processed meteoric iron long before they learned how to exploit earth's iron ores. Meteorite iron was worked with flint hammers and shaped in objects that in appearance completely corresponded to those made of stone. That's how the Greenland Eskimos made their knives from meteorite iron. 
And when Cortez asked the Aztec chiefs where they got their knives from, they showed him the way to sky with a gesture. Like the Mayans of Yucatan and the Incas of Peru, the Aztecs used only meteoric iron and therefore valued it more than gold. The first finds of processed gold were found in Egypt and Mesopotamia. In the 5th and 4th millennium, gold objects also began to be placed in graves in Central and Eastern Europe. The most abundant find is from Varna in Bulgaria, where a pile of gold objects was found in one grave. What is important in those earliest times? There are mountains in the area of the Balkans that are still rich with ores today. Ancient miners come to these areas in search of copper and gold, and they settle there, which is interesting, because we know now that there were groups of people who lived a life devoted to mining, so they come exactly as the first population. They sit on that completely unattractive area for farmers or herders, because that area was hilly and forested, but also rich in copper and gold. There is no population here that will really buy gold, so they kept in touch with the southern peoples and traded, who lived from animal husbandry and agriculture. Then, at the site of Rano in Bulgaria, also called Grave 43, which dating from 4600 BC to 4200 BC, there is found a buried male person aged 40 to 50, that grave contained up to 1,000 objects, of which 980 were made of gold. Among these objects there was gold balls, rings, bracelets, even a cover for the male genital organ made of gold. Most of the objects made of gold were balls, handwork, which was made in such a way that it could be sewn into clothes. While gold was used for decoration, copper was used to imitate objects Axes and hammers made of copper were found in the graves. The abundance of gold and copper objects found in Varna suggests that the people buried in this cemetery either had great trade connections with the surrounding areas rich in gold or copper, or they ruled over those areas. The first objects made of metal, balls and needle were made in Europe around 6000 BC. The objects were shaped by striking and were made of copper. After copper comes gold. In the 5000 BC, the processing of metals by smelting began. The melting temperature was then around 800 degrees Celsius. This was done in kilns, similar to those created for firing fine ceramics. Melting is soon followed by the casting technique. Molten metal was poured into molds, then further processed by hammering. The first melting pots and slag remains were found in the Balkans, and date back to around 4000 BC. Among the oldest copper mines were found in southern Bulgaria, where copper was extracted from trenches 80 meters long, 10 meters wide and about 20 meters deep. These mines date back to 5000 100 BCE, and copper was extracted from them. In addition to copper, the early miners were also looks for gold. Copper is a reddish heavy metal that has a melting point of 1,083 degrees Celsius. After silver, copper is the best conductor of heat and electricity. It is resistant to corrosion. In ancient times, it became rare. At that time, most of the copper came from the island of Cyprus. Copper was then known under the name of Cyprus ore. From there it got its Latin name for copper, cuprum. Gold attracted people with its color. It is like that because of the electronic structure of the gold atom, which absorbs electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths shorter than 5,600 angstroms, but reflects wavelengths longer than 5,600 angstroms. It is the wavelength of yellow light. 
Gold is one of the rarest elements in the Earth's crust. It is calculated that there are only a few milligrams per ton. It occurs natively in primary deposits. It is found in the form of grains, flakes or branched wires in rocks. Because of this, ore prospectors were crucial in the development of mining. The first step in mining is the search for metals. Guided by his knowledge of ores and minerals, perhaps also some knowledge of the morphology of the deposits in which the metals occur, or some theory of their formation, the prospector must find the ore deposits. It is certain that from the earliest times, Hunter searched faraway lands in search of flint, precious stones, or ores. But we have no clear record of the principles by which they were guided. If a metal such as gold or copper was found in its pure form, perhaps in nuggets or flakes, it was easy to work with it further. But if the metal was mixed with other elements, skill was needed to separate it. Early miners and metallurgists made a series of small technological revolutions to obtain pure metals. One of those revolutions is getting mercury. They use special furnaces and techniques. These furnaces do not have a flat bottom, they have a small dome. And what happens? They threw in cinnabarite, warmed it up. Cinnabarite turns into a gas at 400 degrees. It condenses on the dome of the furnace which is not high, and when it is a big enough drop, it drops down due to its weight and falls through the fire, and that drop of metal now passes through that fire and does not solidify. That is mercury. In front of the furnace, which has such a sloping bottom, everything leaks from the furnace towards the front. It has one small narrow ditch. Everything went down into that ditch. That's how you could collect the mercury. And now you ask yourself, who needs mercury five and a half thousand years before Christ? But mercury melts gold at the daytime temperature, around 15 to 20 degrees. Throw that powder full of sand and those small traces of gold. Mercury will melt the gold. It will also melt silver a little slower and copper a little slower, but gold the fastest as the mercury has now melted the gold and left behind all the impurities, you will separate it from what was dirty, transfer it to another container, heat it again in that other container where you have that mercury and the gold dissolved in it, we will heat that mercury to 400 degrees. The mercury will evaporate and you got gold. And that's how our ancestors got to gold 7,000 years ago. Thanks for watching and if you liked the video please subscribe and like a video.